Hey there crafty friends, my name is Linda Dolke and I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia and today I'm going to be showing you a really cute little card um, and a bit of technique as well so I'm going to show you how I used my white ink to emboss these beautiful snowflakes on some acetate see how shiny it is um, and it gives a really great 3D look because it really looks like these white snowflakes are in front of what I've got going on in the background here so stick around and I hope you enjoy this card today so here is our card and um, I, I really liked how this turned out so I wanted to share it with you today. I'm going to be using a couple of key components. First of all I'm using a brand new set. Now this one comes out on and most of the things I'm using today are brand new and they'll be available on the 4th of August 2020. Um, this is the Snowflake Wishes stamp set and I know I get a lot of um, comments sometimes from my Australian um, followers who say well why do we do snowflakes at Christmas time? We don't have snowflakes in Australia, it's summer for us right? but um, I just think they're beautiful and my main reason for using them is because when else am I going to use them in Australia <laughs> than Christmas so I'm going to use them just because I like them um, and if uh, if you like them too well then feel free to use them or there might be something else you'd like to use to do this technique instead I've used my white ink I've actually got one of the old style ink pads here I do need to order myself a new one but um, white ink is so versatile I use it for lots of different things so you're going to need that also the colors I'm using today I'm also using our new misty moonlight which is the new blue that we have from our ink color range um, and I'm going to be using from the same suite, it's called uh, Snowflake Splendor, this suite, but I'm also using some uh, DSP, Designer Series Paper, from the same suite, and it's called the Snowflake, ugh, I can't say it, Snowflake Splendor DSP. So it's beautiful. Let me quickly show it to you really fast. Um, there's two sheets of each, and you know, there's beautiful designs on both sides, and it's got, it's got like a real um, atmospheric wash kind of background. So there's, you know, lots of beautiful blues and of course these colors are really something I gravitate towards I just love these kinds of colors so two of those I really like this one I nearly chose this one for this car but I went with the darker blue instead and two more this one which has got beautiful purples and blues and then this one which is the one I've decided to use it's blue and white on one side which is also lovely and then we've got this beautiful kind of um, watercolored look on this side so that's actually the piece I'm using and I've already cut my piece to size I'll put the measurements up for you but I work mostly in metric so for me I will do inches for you on the screen as well but um, this is this piece is nine and a half centimeters wide by 13.8 long okay and then this misty moonlight piece the cardstock piece uh, which is that new in color um, this is half a centimeter bigger on each side so it's 10 centimeters wide and 14.3 long so um, I will put up the the appropriate measurements in, in uh, inches for you as well okay and you can see you could use any of the different pieces you know some areas have got the darker color and some have got the lighter this one I had more darker color going on so this is going to give me a little bit of a different effect this has got more lighter color going on um, but that's how that one's going to look and then I'm also going to need for this a piece of acetate now this is these are our window sheets um, I've got a little bit of a mark there on mine but it should be okay because I'm going to emboss over this anyway so um, this piece is measured to be exactly the same size as, as the DSP piece, so 9.5 by 13.8 or the um, measurement you see on the screen in inches. Okay, so the DSP and the acetate piece are the same. Then I've got a, a strip here for my, um, my sentiment and I've got my base cardstock. So let's fold that and get that out of the way. So this is the card base. And I'm just using Whisper White Thick, which is my most used cardstock for card bases, and set that to one side. A minute. Okay, so um, we have this piece here, and I'm going to start by working on the acetate first. Um, I just, I love this. Um, you can actually do this a couple of ways. Actually, let's do it in reverse. I've just said that, and now let's um, let's stamp on this piece first. So. Um, I'm going to start with my Misty Moonlight and I've gone and taken uh, three different snowflakes. It doesn't matter which ones you pick, but I've just picked three different styles and sizes. 
so I've got a largish one which is a little bit more of a full design I've got a medium sized one and then I've got a smaller one okay and they're all slightly different looking in the way they appear and I'm going to start by going with the medium one and I'm going to ink it up with my misty moonlight which way will I want this to go yeah I'll go that way It doesn't really matter which way I'm just thinking which I might like the look of and I'm going to stamp a couple of these in the misty moonlight I'm going to stamp this one and then without re-inking I'm going to stamp another just like that and then maybe do another one up here and go slightly off the edge of the page oh I missed a bit let's see if I can line that up again I think I still didn't quite get that the way I want it to be. It's not going to matter because we're probably going to be stamping a white snowflake over that anyway. If you do make any mistakes when you're doing this, it's very forgiving because it's very easy to cover up any mistakes you might have made. And then I'm going to just grab the smaller one and I'm going to... So I'm being random at the moment. If you go over the edge like this, you can't just re-stamp. You would need, if you want a lighter one, you'll have to stamp it a full one because whatever went off before, the ink won't have picked up there so I'm just going to yeah, that's probably enough we want to leave some space so you don't want to have too many background snowflakes okay then I've got my acetate piece and I'm going to position this over the top of my DSP piece so it sits right there on top we're not gluing it down or anything like that I'm going to get my largest snowflake and I'm going to ink that up in white ink And because we're looking at where these are, you can, I'm going to deliberately stamp one over that little bit of a mist stamp I did before, because then we won't see that. But this helps guide me where I want to have my snowflakes. So you can see I can put them where they fit in between the background ones. And I'm not going to do too many of these bigger ones. I like my snowflakes straight up and down. Of course, you can turn them and have them at different angles if you like, but I like them to be straight up and down. They look like they're the right way around <laughs> to me. And I'm going to have a little bit of an over-the-edge one over here. Once again, not going to do too many. Then I'm going to go to my smallest snowflake and I kind of fill in the gaps. Now, you don't have to fill in all the gaps. You do want some of that a beautiful background showing through so careful when you're positioning your uh, stamps on the acetate reason being that it's sometimes you can slip if you try and rush it i'm just going to line that back up with the background have one going over the edge here there we go it's coming together really nicely i might have a little bit more down the bottom over this edge and you might decide that's enough. I think I'm pretty close to enough. Oh, I'm just getting a bit of a shadow here from the sun coming in my window. I'll move that over. And I'm going to have one more there. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. So if I pick that up, you should be able to see how that's looking. If I put it against the, the plane, you can see it better. All right. Now, here's our challenge with acetate. As, um, when you're using white ink, which is a craft ink, um, on acetate, you can leave it to dry and it will eventually kind of dry. But it's going to stay smudgy for a really long time because obviously your acetate is a completely non-porous um, medium. So you don't, you really want to make the white stay where you want it to stay. So I embossed my white. You could use white embossing powder. The issue is, if you get anywhere you don't want it to be, you may get a little like smattering of um, embossing where you don't actually want the embossing. Now, if you don't mind that look, then that would be fine. But what I did was I used clear embossing powder because if any does happen to go anywhere that you don't want it to be, you're barely going to see it, okay, with the clear. It actually gives you, it's obviously, it's a lot less visible. So it actually hides any mistakes you might have made with your embossing. So I'm grabbing my embossing powder 
And as I said here um, earlier, when you've seen me do embossing before, I usually use a little container, just a, it's a little container out of the kitchen cupboard. And I always go into the container because then it means it's really easy to get your embossing, your leftover powder back into the, to the tub. So let's, let's uh, do this. I'm going to use my clear embossing powder and I'm going to pop it here into my tub and I'm going to pour over liberally the powder. Now because acetate is being acetate it is going to stick in some places. See how it's everywhere? So you want to turn it over and you want to give it a good old flick with your finger. So make sure you're holding on to it nice and tight here and then you should be able to flick off any excess. Now there is still a little bit of powderiness to it. That's okay. I'm actually going to make that part of my design. Then I'm going to, once again, add a bit more. So the static electricity on your um, on your acetate or your window sheet is actually going to attract a bit of powder, but you can see the difference from flicking it off and not flicking it off. So you want to give that a really good flick. You can also, if you want to, come in with a brush and go around. I didn't bother. I decided I didn't mind having a little bit of powder sticking to the acetate in places. And because it's clear, like I said, it's just sort of going to give you a bit of shimmer rather than look, um, look messy. The other thing is, though, if you like the look of the little bits of extra powder, you might want to use white embossing powder and that would give you a bit of a different look. But I decided the clear was better for me. shadow now with the sun if the earlier in the day I can start my videos the better it is because I get less shadow all right I'm going to use my um, heat tool so I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to speed up the camera here and just emboss this um, and you might see as I turn it in the sunlight the sunlight's handy because you can actually see when it starts to get shiny so let's uh, let's do it So we've done this now. Now, one of the secrets with your um, with your embossing is if you're embossing on acetate, it can warp. Mine has just started to because I lingered a little bit too long here in this spot. So um, that's okay because we'll flatten it down at the end. But what you need to know is you only emboss, you only use your heat tool until you see your embossing start to change. You see it change, and then you quickly move on. You don't want to go too much in one spot. You don't want to melt it. So um, so anyway, this is how this is looking now. So let me put this over here and see how it looks. Oh, hang on, I think it was this way, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Right, so that's looking really pretty. I've got a little bit of a smattering of um, like shiny stuff where the embossing powder has picked up um, in other parts of it, but it doesn't mess with our design and actually adds to the overall look of um, like crystals almost. So how do I attach this? And glue dots are always the best thing with acetate, but the nice thing about embossing like this is that you can hide your glue dots behind your embossed images. So I'm just going to find one and then I'm going to put them in the most, like the place where they can hide the best. So, you know, there's a good spot here bet behind these these snowflakes in the middle of the little ones is good. Um, you might even want to think about this when you're actually doing your design is try to have um, some snowflakes towards the edges or towards the corners so that it will better hold down your acetate. I'm just putting one in the middle of each snowflakey bit. Now, this one doesn't have a middle, but I can still kind of put a dimensional kind of in a busy part of that design. And if we need to, I can also, you know, push that dimensional behind if I don't want to see the circle. So I can move that with my with my nail. 
Right, let's try that. Let's see how that looks. Is that the right way? Yes. So you want to line up the corners and then push it down over all those glue dots. And then you get this lovely kind of looking panel where you've got snowflakes in the front. Oh, I missed some. Let me quickly go back with my heat tool. Now if this does happen, you just might need to quickly... And I'm going to grab a brush to... I actually, when I was brushing this with my hand, I actually, some of the uncooked powder, I moved it. And this is what I mean about this technique being quite forgiving. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you mess it up briefly because you can do things to actually fix it up a little bit. Okay. Let's see if we can push that down now. Okay, so that was that's a good example of how an error might easily occur if you don't quite keep an eye on where you're um, where you're cooking it. If you miss any, it will wipe straight off. But as you can see, we still have the snowflakes in place, so it still works okay. Now, if you do end up with any spots that you don't like, that's going to be a great place to put um, an embellishment or um, a sentiment. I'm deciding which way I want this to go. I actually think I do want it to go this way, even though I can see that little mark there. But that's okay, and you'll see why in a minute. All right, so I'm actually going to put this whole panel that's attached with the glue dots. I'm going to, on the back of it, I'm actually going to use some Seal Plus, because I really don't want that to go anywhere. And I'm going to use that. This is a, a new product. The Seal Plus is the stronger of the adhesives and I love it. It's really easy to use, really feels strong and it's not gonna go anywhere once you get that down. So it's terrific. Okay. Now we're holding that in place. Just make sure there's no leftover powder. I've got powder all over my surface, so I'll just wipe that off. Okay. So you can see this one's looking quite different to this one, just because it's a different part of the DSP, and the every, it looks different every time you do it, but I think it's really cute. All right. So let's put our sentiment on. I'm using one here that says, Snowflake wishes for a Merry Christmas. This set, what's good about it is it doesn't have to be just for Christmas. You know, you've got some other sentiments here, like may your season sparkle, or our friendship is one of a kind. Um, and this one, in the coldest moments of the year, my heart is warm because you're near. I mean, that would be nice on the inside of a card, I think. But yeah, there's some really lovely and there's some little background snowflakes as well. So there's actually quite a lot you can do with it. So I'm going to use the Misty Moonlight again. And I've got my sentiment here. And my little piece of cardstock. And I'm going to, sorry about the back of my head for a second. I'm just going to bring this down to line it up. Isn't that nice? Isn't that lovely? It's really, really lovely. All right, so I'm going to be putting this across here. Now, it's the same width as my Merry Merlot piece underneath. Um, and I could, um, in fact, I might just use a little dauber and very, very lightly go along the tops. And probably not. don't need to worry about the bottom because that's where I'm going to put my glimmer paper, but I'm just doing it lightly anyway. All right, then I'm going to grab, um, this is the lighter seal. So this one is a, a lighter adhesive. You could use this one for both, um, totally up to you. I use them slightly differently, but I will this time just to use the seal plus. And I'm going to position that just here. Just like that. And this is where we need that little bit of glimmer paper. 
and here is what the glimmer paper looks like isn't that beautiful it's balmy blue it's just stunning it's from the same suite as the snowflakes I love it and I've just cut a strip that's exactly the same width as my piece here um, and I've just like it's about a, about an eighth of an inch it's tiny tiny half a centimeter so just a little tiny sliver and I'm going to actually use the snail uh, the seal not the seal plus and I'm just going to pop a little bit on the back you've always got to check to make sure it's sticky before you start with this stuff and that's catching people out a little bit but once you get used to it it's such good adhesive it's very very sticky um, and I'm really enjoying using it so this is why you didn't need to put any sponging on the bottom of your sentiment there we go just like that then I'm going to use my seal so it's actually not a, not a difficult card at all but there's just a few steps but if you're like me and you love embossing and you love different things you can do with your white ink it's a great little card a bit of fun technique on this one I've got a couple of embellishments that I'm going to suggest that you could use if you choose you don't have to um, from the same suite as the Snowflake Splendor um, is these beautiful blue backed gems, uh, adhesive backed gems I should say, but they're, they're, as you can see, they're quite beautiful and you've got kind of your more um, darker bluey green and then the light more like the balmy blue here and they're really lovely. And then I actually use these on my card, these are not from the same suite but they are in the, in the new mini catalogue, these are called adhesive backed snowflakes and I used a few of them here and there and this is where I said before that it won't matter that you can see a bit of a glue dot here or there because you can always cover that up. There's a sheet of pinky purpley ones and a, a sheet of bluey purpley ones. Um, and I'm going to put a couple of these bluey ones on. So I'm going to pop a little one here. Right there where I felt that that was showing a bit of... And where will I put? I'm going to put a few around. Maybe three or maybe four, five. I usually go with odd numbers. Aren't they cute? I love them and I like how easy they are to use. I'm going to put one right there. And there we go, our card's done. What do you think? Do you like that? Totally different cards because of that background and yet it's, it is the same card. But I really, really love these beautiful DSPs. Um, how lovely and atmospheric it creates that background and really gives that 3D look. It looks like these ones over here are further off in the distance. I love it. I hope you have enjoyed watching me do that. Um, I've enjoyed making them and uh, if you have any questions please ask them and I'll put all the um, information about where to go to purchase these products in the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back with more for you soon. Thanks guys. Bye.